I'm Tomota Kawashima. I'm an endovascular neurosurgeon at Aichi Medical University. I will talk about how to manage a transbrachial cerebral angiography using a Simon's type diagnostic catheter. I believe there are so many basic tips for neural intervention in this presentation, especially for beginners. I'd like to discuss two topics about the Simon's type diagnostic catheter. First of all, I'll show you our setup and how to make a basic shaping of the Simon's catheter. This is our angio room. There is a scaffolding board used as a working space. This space allows us easy and safe manipulation of devices. For local anesthesia, we usually administrate a small amount, about 1 to 2 ml of lidocaine, around above the brachial artery and subcutaneal tissue. We believe not necessarily injecting beside the artery. It's important to have rapid penetration with a needle through the skin and arterial wall to decrease the patient's pain and discomfort. How do we decide on a precise puncture point? I recommend tactile bidirectional palpation, as shown here in the picture. First, the wrong axis is determined by two fingers. And second, the short axis is decided by the index finger. Next, we go on to an important issue which is how to manage vasospasm. When you find a loss of arterial pulsation, turn the patient's arm to a good limb position. The pulsation is often revived immediately by the relaxing arm position. This is a 4 French Simon's diagnostic catheter. An 80 cm catheter has better control than a long catheter. However, in the case of the radial approach, I recommend over 100 meter centimeter length catheter. These pictures show the working angle at the chest while performing the procedure. I recommend an oblique view rather than the anterior posterior view because the oblique view shows better visualization of each artery. As we can see in the AP view, it's difficult to recognize the origin of each artery. On the other hand, left oblique view shows clear and we can recognize all target vessels. How do you handle cases where no torque is transmitted to the catheter due to a vessel tortuosity? In the situation with difficulty giving a torque, using a guide wire and fine vibration are effective. If your catheter has a stopcock, a half locking technique is useful to fix the positioning of the wire inside the catheter. This technique brings us to focus on the operation. As you see in this picture, this is the ideal shape of the Simon's catheter to select each vessel. I'll be demonstrating here three techniques how to make this basic shape of Simon's catheter. The first technique is to reflect the wire against the aortic valve. This is the simplest method of all. In this video, the guide wire is navigated as a J shape first. And then the Simon's catheter is followed. This is the basic shape of the Simon's catheter. The tip of the guide wire should be navigated as far as possible under fluoroscopic monitoring. 
And at the same time, the tip must not be out of your sight. In some cases, a wire or catheter may get easily migrated into the left ventricle through the aortic valve. At that time, patients may complain of chest discomfort due to arrhythmia. It's mandatory to have close attention to the rhythm of the ECG. When you notice an arrhythmia, the wire or catheter must be withdrawn quickly then before checking your sight. The second method for making the basic Simmons shape is a catheter reflected against the aortic valve. Once the head of the Simmons is navigated into the descending aorta, pull the catheter. At the same time, the inner guide wire should be kept away from the tip of the catheter. The longer the reflected part is better for this technique for navigate into the descending aorta. In this second technique, using the guide wire is optional. While the wire is kept as a J-shape, only the catheter is pulled back like this. In this video, the Simmons catheter is pushed against the aortic valve without a guide wire. After making a reversed basic shape, the head is navigated into the descending aorta. Then pull the catheter until the basic shape is achieved. Like this. There are some pitfalls of these methods. In cases with the shaggy aorta, the previous two techniques described may have a high risk of thromboembolic complications. So I recommend other technical options. The third method is inserting the head of the Simmons directly into the descending aorta. As you can see, it's often useful to fix the tip of the guide wire at the corner of the Simmons catheter. And this is a very lucky situation. If the tip of the catheter enters the descending aorta, we can make the basic shape without any effort. This is a very lucky and easy case. When you feel it's difficult to select each vessel's origin, an altography is very useful. The ideal position of the catheter is here. This is an inadequate position. When the tip of the catheter is migrated into the coronary artery, the artery may rupture due to the contrast over injection. Moreover, this inadequate position brings insufficient image because contrast tends to run only along the inner course of the aortic arch. This can lead to inadequate information. This movie is a demonstration using a silicon vascular model. After the catheter is inserted into the cyst, the guide wire advanced about 10 cm ahead of the catheter. The first technique is the wire reflecting against the aortic valve. Wire first, then catheter followed. The second method is the catheter reflected against the aortic valve. Once the head of the Simmons is navigated into the descending aorta, 
ゼンプルザキャスイータ。The third method is inserting the head of the Simmons directly into the descending aorta. This is the safest method of all. But it's a lucky case. And this is an ideal positioning of a four autography. The second topic I would like to present is how to select each vessel using this Simmons care theater. First, here is how to select the left subclavian artery. After making a basic shape, pull the catheter and select the left subclavian artery like this. When the tip of the catheter cannot reach the origin of the left subclavian artery, you can use the guide wire to open the tip angle. Or you can select the left subclavian artery directly from the descending aorta. When the tip of the wire is here, the head of the catheter is closed. On the other hand, when the tip is here, the head of the catheter turns open. As mentioned earlier, a half blocking technique is useful to fix the positioning of the wire inside the catheter. These are the left subclavian artery angiogram. When we use a mechanical auto injector, contrast media is injected at the rate of 4 to 5 ml per second and 7 to 10 ml volume. While injecting the contrast, the patient's left arm is tightened with a manchet cuff to get better intracranial images. If you want to select directly the left vertebral artery, there are other types of the catheter, such as ito A, and it's better to select than the Simon's catheter. Next is how to select the left common carotid artery. The Simon's shape sometimes does not fit to select. In such a case, apply torque in the clockwise direction and select the left CCA by making the Simmons into the alpha shape. In the case of a bovine arch, wherein the left CCA originated from the brachiocephalic artery, we can select the CCA directly once the catheter turns straight shape. We sometimes feel the selection of the right CCA from the brachiocephalic artery is difficult. There is an important tip. This 3D image is a right oblique view. As you can see, the right carotid artery and right subclavian artery can be distinguished. The right CCA is always branched to the anterior direction. On the other hand, the subclavian artery is always branched to the posterior direction. There are images of the left carotid angiogram. There are cervical carotid angiograms. I recommend that the AP view should be turned to the left oblique about 10 to 15 degrees. I'll explain the reason later. These are images of the right common carotid angiogram. This is a case of acute ischemic stroke. As you can see, there is severe tortuosity at the cervical ICA. This is a lateral view. 
on the exact APU, the oral motion and prosthesis may prevent visualization of the ICA. So I recommend an ipsilateral oblique about 15 degrees rather than an exact AP view. Finally, here are the right vertebral angiograms. The Simon's catheter is pulled in a straight fashion until the tip gets hooked at the origin of the right VA. Then the guide wire is advanced into the VA and followed by the catheter. When the guide wire is navigated into the VA, the tip of the wire should be twirled around to prevent migration into the segmental arteries. I've seen the vertebral dissection by the wire in the case of Ehlers Danlos syndrome, which has extremely fragile vessels. This movie is a demonstration. This is a selection of the left subclavian artery. When it's difficult to select, we can select by a descending aorta. Now the tip of catheter is hooked in the left subclavian artery. Next, this is a left CCA. When it's difficult to select, turn the catheter in a clockwise direction. After making an alpha fashion, pull up the catheter. Next is the right CCA. After inserting it into the brachiocephalic artery, turn the head of the catheter in the anterior direction. Finally, this is the anti-grade selection of the right VA. And this is the retrograde selection of the right VA. Pull the catheter in a straight fashion until the tip is hooked in the VA origin. That concludes my presentation. Thank you all for your attention. Please feel free to ask me any questions. ありがとうございました。